Bibles. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. We we got quite a bit of scripture because I want to lay out a few things for you. Amen. Give Josiah a little time to get his stuff here together. He's a hog killing machine right there. Amen. Church Wednesday night in New Caney. We saw that there was a hog menacing out beside Josiah and Natalia's house. About 220 pound hog. And uh, by the time Josiah got to it, he said it was 250. <laughs> Amen. But whatever, it was huge, man. And so I, right after church Wednesday night, and that's the beauty of, of just being able to be where we're at. I said, go out there and shoot that thing. Amen. Well, sure enough, he pulled up, put his headlights on that hog, and it stayed right there under the feeder. He sent Natalia in the house. I heard you were making all kind of noise, and that, that hog still didn't run off. And came out with his seven mag and shot that big hog, didn't go 20. Hallelujah. Go Laid him down, and uh, bullet didn't even go through it. That's how thick they are. But uh, we, we found that when they're corn-fed, they eat good. Seems like all our hogs are corn-fed because they're eating all our corn. Amen. And if you do have a taste for raccoon, let me know. I can get you a bunch of them, all right? Because we sure got a few of them hanging around. Even got a few deer to coming in and out, so looking forward to it. This, this Wednesday is Veterans Day. If you've served in our military, a vet, would you please stand? Amen. We want to thank God for our veterans in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give them a big hand. We love our vets. I think it's so, so important, so important right now during this time of, uh, of social up, uh, upheavals, uh, not just in America but around the world, that we remind ourselves that the reason we have the freedom to do what we do is because of our vets. Amen. Our veterans. My dad was a veteran. My father-in-law, Tom, today's his 88th birthday. My wife, Lori, is there with him in Utah. He had a heart surgery, and he's doing well. But shout out to him as a, a vet and somebody who served. You know, and I just appreciate our, our vets. You know, the military has expectations to it. While talking to a potential recruit, the military recruiter said exactly what kind of job are you looking for in the military? Well, the young high school kid said, well, I'm looking for something with an enlistment bonus of about $20,000 where I won't have to work too hard and I won't have to deploy overseas. The recruiter said, well, what if I could hook you up with a skill that allowed you to become straight in as an E7 where you'll only work weekdays and you can have the base of your choice and stay there as long as you want? The young recruit sat up straight and said, wow, are you kidding? The recruiter replied, yeah, but you started it. I mean, no, the military is not that way. Amen. It's not that way at all. I, I can tell you this. I, I, I'm a little disturbed with many of you. I, for the last four years, I've, I've rejoiced in the fact that thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of, of babies were born that would not have been born over the last four years because of a, a strong pro-life stance in our government. It's made a shift toward liberalism. You've seen that. And I, I don't say this to be funny, but there's a guy named Jeff Dunham that has this little, uh, he's a ventriloquist, has a little dummy called Walter. And this new guy in the White House reminds me of Walter. First off, off, he's a puppet that will be used by all the liberalism in that White House. Amen. 47 years has not done anything other than lived off the po politics. And the other thing is, the puppet was made in China. So uh, we'll just see how this thing's going to go. But I, here's my concern. And I don't, you know, I know, some, I know some of you voted Democrat, and that's your call. But here's the bottom line of all that is that it, now we will be having problems with other countries because we don't have a backbone to stand, amen, against them. And that's one of my concerns. We've got to continue to stand with, with Israel. We've got to continue to stand with the things of the Word of God, amen, and keep pressing through. I thank God for the vet, amen. You know, it was the veteran, not the preacher, who's given us a freedom to speak and to share the way we do. Other countries don't have this freedom. Why is that? Because of the blood of the vets, amen, that went out and fought. It was a veteran, not the reporter, who's given us freedom of the press. So discouraged with, you know, the, the new administration is the media darling, finally. They finally got to, uh, they can't say anything bad or won't say anything bad. But I thank God for the vets. Can I get an amen? It's the vet, not the campus organizer who's given us the freedom to assemble. It's the veteran, not the lawyer who's given us the right to a fair trial. It's the vet, not the politician, who's given us the right to vote. It's the vet, 
who salutes the flag, who serves under the flag. It's the vet who dies, who receives an American flag. At every funeral I've done with a vet, they get that American flag to remind them it's the red, white, and blue you fought for. It's a freedom that we've got. And many, many have, you know, they disagreed with what was going on in the White House, and yet they still fought. So I pray to God that our military stays strong during this time, because I promise you there are other nations like North Korea and China and, and uh, Iran who are, who are poor poised against our nation now and rejoiced over that. I don't know if you know it, but when they thought Trump was winning, the Chinese uh, ying went, woo, whatever that Chinese coin is called. It went way down. They were fearful. Amen. But now they're rejoicing in the streets. So it's important for us to realize it is what it is, but I thank God for our soldiers. Amen. Amen. I won't forget that. So today we honor, we honor our armed service veterans and those who, who died protecting our freedom. Amen to you vets. We owe a debt of gratitude because you were willing to go. This Wednesday will be a Veterans Day celebration. Amen. Opportunity for us to remember that. But I wanted to get an early start on it. To serve, to give on behalf of the United States of America, I say God bless you. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Paul reminds us in 2 Timothy. You know, again, I was in Timothy as I preached last Sunday to Tuesday and Wednesday night, as I talked about Onesimus. Well, Paul mentions this. Not only are we Christian, not only are you a believer, not only are you a disciple, but you are also to be a soldier. And there in the dungy cell in Rome, Paul penned these words. A man who had fought uh, through uh, death itself, stoned to death, raised back to life. A man who had been belittled, put down. Left alone there, he had a friend by Onesimus, a runaway slave who came and blessed him and helped him. And he reminded the believers on his way out. I believe your last words are so, so very important. He said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, endure hardship with us like a good soldier. Amen. Everybody say soldier. Amen. As a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. I mean, no, no matter what happens in any house, White House, church house our commanding officer will always be Christ Jesus can I get an amen amen good soldiers they are followers everybody say followers Mark chapter 8 verse 34 when he called the crowd to him along with his disciples he said if anyone would come after me he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me the following Christ and uh, and I will say this particularly to us American Christians uh, is that it's become a weakness. It's uh, if we want to, you know, if there's a uh, something we don't want to do, we can stay home and watch. We don't we don't get into following. Maybe a little bit on Sunday, but what about the rest of the week? The Scripture says that Jesus made a statement in John chapter six. He said, "I'm the bread that came down from heaven." He said, "Unless you eat of me and partake of me, you have no part with me." At that time, there were seventy. Everybody say seventy. Seventy. Not just twelve, but seventy disciples that were running with him. And he throws this out there. In other words, there are times that following Christ is easy when you don't listen to the hard sayings. And there were some hard sayings. And he goes on in verse fifty-eight. He said, "This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died. But he who feeds on this bread will live forever." He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Now, he's speaking of spiritual things here, and sometimes it's hard for us to discern it unless you catch it. Dana, it was good to have you on a motorcycle ride yesterday. That was the shock of shocks for me. No, she was not uh, uh, riding. She was riding on the bike. Thank God. Amen. Uh, verse 6, he said, On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this. Did you know that he knows when you're grumbling? He hears you in your quiet places. He knows why you're disturbed. He said about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? And, had, and this is the hard part as a... As a a man that loves Christ, you know, when I think I've offended somebody, I try to deal with it. You know, I try to, yeah, you know, I'll try to be the better person. Even if I know it's not my fault. I know y'all are all that way, right? Amen. But so Jesus does. He said, well, if that offends you, what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words have spoken to you, the Spirit. Their life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. So i got all these disciples, but I'm telling you, some of you are going to split. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want us to leave too, do you? Asked Jesus of the twelve. 
Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of what? Eternal life. So Peter picked up on this is spiritual, man. This is something that I've been needing. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. You know, when he said this, Lord, to whom shall, to, shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The story represents a critical time for his disciples. This day represents a critical time for us. These are not mere followers. A disciple, someone who is a learner, someone who has accepted the disciplines of change. We talked about uh, you know, that they often would come in at the age of uh, 13 and up, that the disciples were young people as they came in. Amen. These are people who have seen some things. They have been behind the scenes, and they were select. They had sacrificed when others did not. They went beyond the call of duty. But today is different. These soldiers, things are changing. The countenance of Christ portrays an image of concern. The tone of his voice seems to deepen. He seems to be clear in his throat. And he wasn't trying to pull them back, but there, were, there was an interrogation here. Amen. And when he begins to speak, what sparked this turn of events and this transformation of attitude from Christ? It was rejection. Rejection. That you would not follow me because I said something hard. Amen. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. It's amazing to me you can preach a lot of things that people are pleased with. But if you say something to them that they don't like. Amen. How many know there's another church somewhere? Amen. There's another place somewhere. There's another preacher somewhere. Amen. And Jesus saw this, but he didn't back off of it. He stayed with it. Rejection is a powerful thing. Jesus himself did not enjoy it. Mother Teresa said the worst pain ever experienced by anyone is the feeling of rejection. Amen. It's so powerful that it affects people. Even when there is little or no relationship, you can have very little relationship with people on social media and they reject something you say and all of a sudden you're more bothered by the one dislike than you were the 99 likes. Amen. Something affected you. You get shattered. It cuts deep. Amen. That's what it does. Rejection is the force behind many young ladies who have left home because mom or dad pushed them aside. Rejection is the feeling of a young man gets when dad can't find time to throw the ball anymore with him. Isaiah 53 3, he was despised and rejected by men. Jesus came to be rejected. And I say to you, there are times you're going to be rejected because you're following Christ. Stand. Keep standing. Be a follower. Amen. Soldier, be a follower. Stay with this thing. Don't back away from it. Here we find Christ, the lover of all lovers, the faithful father, eternal friend, being rejected by those he poured his life into. Disciples. You know, when you pastor people, and I say this in love again, there will be people that will leave. This week I got a phone call from a man who last I talked to him was 18 years ago. You know what he called? He called me and said, Pastor, I just wanted you to know you were once my pastor, and I want you to forgive me for anything I said or thought. And I thought to myself, my goodness, man, I, I have left that so long ago. Hey, man, I walked away. But, but I'll, I'll accept, you know, God bless you. Go in peace. Sin no more. Amen, whatever, you know. But, but the bottom line is, is that I, I, too, have been through rejection. Some people have felt rejection from me. And it's how you're going to handle it. And Jesus pressed through it. My friend, I will tell you, he had many that followed him. In John 2, 23, many came to him at Passover. John 4, while baptized, and many came to him. John 4, in Samaria, many came to him. John 4, in Galilee, many came to him. Tiberius, great crowds followed him in John chapter 6. But today, there's murmuring. And I say to the church... There's going to be a lot of murmuring over the next few weeks. And you're going to have to watch yourself and remind yourself that you're a kingdom person. Amen. And no matter what goes on in this generation, you, you, you belong to God. Amen. That we're kingdom people. Why was this rejection so bad? You know, here's a murmuring, grumbling is complaining. You may not be saying a thing, but Jesus knows when you're murmuring. Amen. You rejected his word. It, it, not because of what he did, but what he said. It's a hard saying, verse 60 said. Uh, verse 60 said, Hard means tough or severe. Not hard to understand, hard to accept. Amen. Unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part with me. And they took that as cannibalism. Amen. Jesus was not promoting cannibalism. Amen. If you keep moving through Scripture, you realize he's saying, unless you do as I do. Amen. And listen to what I say. Christ, one of the things I've learned about him, uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 25. The Scripture says large crowds were traveling with Jesus. Here they are. And turning to him, he said, hey, let's start a big church. Let's gather everybody under a tent. No, he had an opportunity there with this large crowd. And he said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be to my disciple. Now, if you are a believer in Christ and you read that, as I did when I first got born again, I read that and I thought, whoa, 
Jesus, you just told me that if I come to you and I don't hate James and Marie and Jimmy and Sandy, amen, if I break this thing down, and even all my brothers and sisters and even my own life, I, don't, I can't be your disciple. I read that and I thought to myself, this is why you've got to understand his words. You've got to understand his spirit, who he is, what he's talking about. Jesus never told you to hate anyone. Amen. The only thing he ever told you to hate was sin and Satan. That's it. Amen. To have a hatred toward that. But as far as life goes, and people not to hate them. So I, again, I, I'm, not too, uh, I'm not so King James all the time. So every now and then I revert to something else. And then I read this out of another translation. And it says simply, if anyone comes to me and does not refuse to let go of. Wow. That changed everything. Refuse to let go of. Did you know that bless your heart, sometimes family can drag you straight to hell? Amen. They can change the way you think. It's important. I love when families serve God. I love when families connect with Jesus. I love when families work together. But be careful here. We understand there ain't nothing in this world you need to hold on to because when you leave here, you don't get to bring anything with you. You don't even, But most of us will not even get to pick the clothes out we're going to get to wear on our way out. Amen. Somebody else is going to go do that for you. So it's important to understand if I don't let go of things, if I can't, you've got to hold on lightly to stuff. Amen. It's all going to leave you and not it's going to burn up. Can I get an amen? So Christ wants to be Lord over all our personal relationships. When I have a relationship with somebody, amen, it's important that Christ is involved. And he also wants to be over our personal goals and desires. Verse 27, whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. No one can be a good leader who cannot first be a good follower. Amen. In the military, there is almost always somebody ranked above you. Amen. This is what bothered me a little bit about what's going on right now. There's always somebody ranked above you. Following Jesus is not an option. It's a command. He commands us to do it. In the military, refusal to obey an order is not allowed. Court martial will follow, yet we often take obedience to God so very lightly. Amen. I just say so light. It's so light. I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I say it's grace. It's mercy. I can do it. I don't have to if I want to. Amen. But to be a good soldier. Hey, soldier. Amen. Remind, be a good soldier. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life. Again, uh, Timothy is some of the last words of Paul. He said, fight the good fight. Amen. As a believer, fight the good fight. He didn't say, hey, go to church regular. He said, fight the good fight. Amen. This thing is a fight we in right now. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made your confession in the presence of many witnesses. Hold on to that. That word fight in the Greek is the present tense. Amen. It's telling me that right now I am fighting. I will be fighting tomorrow. So good soldiers are fighters. You've got to keep right on fighting. Next one, they are familiar. First, they're familiar with the strategies of the enemy. Did you know the one thing the enemy wants you to do is to hold unforgiveness in your heart? If the enemy can get you to be unforgiving toward a, a, a former friend, spouse, church member, or whoever else, if he can get you to be unfriendly and, and to stay unforgiving toward them, he's got you, man. So the scripture says that Corinthians 2.10, if you forgive anyone, I also will forgive him. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us. Have you noticed that life is full of schemes? Life is full of deceit. Life is full of all kinds of stuff. And there are people that, bless their heart, they, they, they act like they mean well, but they will get you in a, between a rock and a hard place. And I'm going to tell you how to get out of that. Forgiveness. Amen to forgive. You know, I've gone through some things over the, even the last month that some are saying, why, why are you so forgiving? Because my heart, I've been forgiven much. I love much. I love people. Amen. I've seen some hard things. I've had, I've had things that happen that, that, that I've not even told anyone about. And, and that's okay. It's not about the preacher today. But the bottom line is, when I read this, I realize this is a scheme of the devil. Amen. To try to get me to be unforgiving towards somebody. I'm going to release that. Amen. I'm gonna, that's why when somebody calls me and says, hey, I just want you to know, uh, forget. Hold on. You mean for 18 years? 18 years you've had a problem with wondering if you're going to forgive me for something I did 18 years ago and now you're going, I have held you prisoner? You've thought, in other words, every morning you got up, you had me for breakfast? Bless your heart. I'd rather have bacon and eggs. Can I get an amen? I don't want somebody. So I just release you in the name of Jesus. Don't be self-righteous. Let things go. Understand there is a strategy. 
There's a strategy to the enemy. Amen. But I am familiar with the enemy. I understand what he tries to do and tries to get me to harbor. Second, they're familiar with the skills concerning their weaponry. Now, I'm not going to read all this. This will be on the overhead. You can move through it quietly if you want, Mike. But in chapter 6 of the book of Ephesians, he tells us to put on the full armor of God. He said, when you go out to fight, you need to have the belt of truth. You need to understand truth. What is truth? This is truth. So I stand with truth here. The next thing he says, amen, have the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Right standing with God is a powerful thing. When I stand in the blood of Christ, amen, covered by his blood, it's a powerful thing. I can handle whatever darts the enemy throws because I got the breastplate of righteousness. Put your shoes in the gospel of peace. Amen. Jesus even used this term in the New Testament, in, in the Gospels, when he told the disciples, when you go into a house and they don't accept you, shake the dust off your feet. Amen. Amen. And walk on out of there. Don't be mad at them. Just get on to the next house. There's plenty of houses out there. Amen. There's plenty of people to reach. So lead with peace. Peace is such a powerful thing. Peace lets you sleep at night. I talked to my pastor this morning. I said, how'd you sleep last night? He said, like a baby. I said, I know why. He said, why? I said, because Notre Dame beat number one Clemson yesterday in football. Amen. And you're an old Catholic boy, and you remember that. You're happy about it. Oh, he said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. He said, I've been waiting on that moment. You know, and I, I can kind of tell when people well, sleep good like that. But I can tell you this, peace is a wonderful thing. Amen. You can't pay enough money for peace. The shield of faith. Take up the shield of faith where you can quench the darts of the enemy. Put on the helmet of salvation. You know why some people don't know that they really saved? Because they ain't got it here yet. Because it ain't come up out of here yet. But when I got it here, it comes up out of here and reminds me I am born again. Amen. My life changed. I look back over my past. Please look back. Over, not over the bad stuff, but over some of the things you've gone through in life. Realize that God saved you, rescued you, yanked you out. Amen. I look back over the old gospel things that I've gone through through life. Amen. I, I, I just, I, I don't forget them. I don't forget them. God, God has been so good. So good to me. Amen. Amen. So put on the full armor. Helmet of salvation. Sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. Amen. That, I can't fight about a lot of stuff, but I know a little bit about this book. And I stand on this book. I remind myself that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. No matter how sour the world. This is how I fight my battles. I go to Psalm 107. I remind myself I've been delivered out of so many things. I go to Psalm 103 and realize that he's, he's forgiven me. And not only that, he's, he's taken away my diseases. Amen. I go to Psalm 51 and remind myself that he can create a clean heart in me if I ask him to. Amen. So I stand on the word of God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. So I, I know the schemes of the enemy. So I want to be a good soldier. Amen. I'd love to preach this to even to all the military. Hallelujah. Thirdly, they're familiar with the shadows of their friends. Who is it you hang out with? You tell me who you hang out with, I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who you hang out with, I'll tell you who you are. Amen. How you're going to be. A good soldier is not only looking out for themselves, but they're also looking out for their friends. There's a mutual need for being close to other soldiers as you can fight the enemy. I can't fight this fight alone. I can't do it alone. Yesterday, I took a bike ride with a bunch of soldiers. That's what they were. That's why I like riding scooters. It has that militant feel to it. Amen. As we went over and gathered with a bunch of other bikers and, and uh, promoted and, and helped support, and I brought an offering from the church to them, and, and then we gave offerings to help out in the area of bikers' children, bikers who have fallen. Uh, what I mean by that, they were killed on their bike, and so their kids need help. Also foster families, 30 foster families. But, but Joseph, as I'm riding a bike, I'm watching my rearview mirror, and I'm looking for you. Because jo Joseph's doing real good on a motorcycle now, but I've watched for him. I look on further back, and I see other young puppies back. Not, 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 not you're a young puppy. But, but I look back there, because we had younger guys with us also. Had one dude on a crotch rocket. I told him, you get in the back end. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't putting you up here with us, puppy. Hey, hallelujah. You just ride back there so I can see you. But you got an eye on one another, and a good soldier watches after one another. Hey, Amen. When I think of the Old Testament, I think of King David, how he had his mighty men. They watched after one another. Hallelujah. They looked after. They were, they were familiar with one another. They knew what they could do for it when help one another. They understood each other's weakness and strengths. Hebrews 10, 25. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. My concern today is because of the pandemic, people have got in a habit of not meeting together anymore. Amen. They've, they've backed away. I was out at a car show Friday night. I can't stay home. I can't do it. 
I can't isolate. I can't hang out. No, yes, if I get sick or something, I'll, I'll chill out at the house in my man cave. But as a rule, I feel good, so I get out amongst them. Hallelujah. And I walk around, and I see a guy I have not seen in a year who attends our church. And I love this guy, man. He's got a beautiful hot rod. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he said, and I had my daughter and son-in-law with me. And he said, Pastor, please don't get on to me. He said, I just got out. He said, I just decided to come over here and hang out with these guys. And he said, I know I need to be in church. And I said, I'm not going to beat you up. I'm not here to beat you up. I'm glad to see you hit the car so get down among people. He said, but you know, I'm, uh, what's the word they say about all of us? That, uh, that we are uh, uh, high risk. High risk, but there's another word for uh, yeah, I'm Susceptible. Uh, I've, 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 I've got issues. Huh? Pre-existing. Pre-existing. I mean, long before you turned gray, you were pre-existing gray. <laughs> Amen. It was coming. You just didn't know you were pre-existing. Amen. So we all have pre-existing things. She said, I got pre I said, so do I. Amen. You know, I've, I've been pre I've got issues and um, physical issues I've had my whole life. But, but I got to get out. And as we began to talk, he said, I'm so tired of being home. I just want to get back out. He said, I, I'm just so glad. And I hung out with him. And I loved the fellowship and the opportunity for kindness. And not to be mean toward people, but I read the scripture and I see it again. As some are in the habit of doing. I, I, I watch our poor. You know, again, I, I don't watch. Uh, the NFL doesn't mean much to me. The NBA or MLB. But I'm still a college football fan. I love the excitement of these young 18, 19, 20-year-olds. And, and all the things. I mean, I see the, the stands are empty. But last night, I did watch the Notre Dame game. I'm not a big Notre Dame fan at all. I just want to see who it is Alabama's going to beat next. So, so I'm watching this game with Clemson, and it's at Notre Dame. And when the game was over, Pastor Mike asked me, he said, what did you think about the end of the game? And I said, well, I'll tell you what happened if you didn't see it. The people, there were only about 25,000 in the stadium. That's all they left there. They all rushed onto the field. And all of a sudden, there was no pandemic. The, the reporters, the guys talking, didn't know what to say. They just kind of swallowed their words because all of a sudden celebration became greater than the fear of a virus. And I thought, this victory does that to you, man. And when you love the church, you know, I know that it's out there. Understand, I got friends that are sick right now praying for them. But it's, again, it's a virus. It's a flu. It's going to happen. Things are going to I don't, you don't boast when you got the flu. Why the fuck? Why do people boast on the, on the internet? They got, they got COVID. I wouldn't boast on about the. I wasn't going to say that, Jesus. I know it probably hurt some people's feelings who've been looking to get attention. Can you erase that off the internet for me, Dennis? Let us not give up meeting together. Some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. One translation says, spur one another on. And all the more, as you see why, the day approaching. What I tell you all that is this day and that day, there's a day approaching, amen, and the, we're getting close. Woo, if anything tells you that we're getting closer, it would have been what happened this week. We're getting closer. We get closer all the time. Let's start closing with this. They are faithful. Good soldiers are faithful. Amen. They remain true even when they must endure hardness. story I haven't told very much. When I was in high school, a couple of my friends went off to the Marine Corps. They went over to Japan, to Okinawa. Amen. They came back on furlough, brought a friend with them. They brought this friend with them, and they brought him up to my house, up on Wheeler Mountain. And the young man stayed at my house. And then the boys that I went to high school with went back to the Marine Corps. That young man stayed at my house. And I was watching this situation as I, I wasn't mean. And mom and dad said, yeah, he can stay here. He doesn't seem to have anywhere else to go. And after a little while, I started to figure this thing out. And I realized that he went A-W-O-L, which means absent without leave. He didn't get permission to be at my house. He's supposed to be back. Now, I'll shorten the story to tell you this. He ended up uh, going somewhere else up in the Carolinas, got shot in the butt, and uh, got a dishonorable discharge. And I thought, what a way to go in life. Amen. It just Frank, that ain't what you want to end up with, you know. Uh, never mind. I just, just wanted to endure hardness. Get back to the Bible. I'm just telling you, I've seen a few things. Endure hardness is a good soldier of Christ Jesus. That expression means to take one share of rough treatment, to suffer or endure hardship or affliction together. It actually means to, to suffer in company with. Let me just say it like this. If I'm suffering, I hope you're with me. 
If I'm celebrating, I hope you're with me. Amen. If you're going through something, the scripture says, we, we, this is how we do it. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Hurt with those that hurt. Amen. Learn how to connect like that. You know, in a sense, we're all vets for Christ. He's not letting us go. Amen. We, we either live in vets or we die in vets. But we're all in active duty when it comes to serving Jesus. Often when I do a funeral or memorial for one of our saints. Hmm. I'm reminded I'm standing over one of the soldiers of Christ. But this person has fought a good fight. They've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for them a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge will give to them when they appear. You know, we got a wall in the back that says what they did here matters there. If, that, if you know a saint that passed and was a part of this church, please put a little three-by-five picture on that wall back there to remind us. They were good soldiers. Amen. They did something. Shortly after joining the Navy, the new recruit asked his officer for a pass so he could attend a wedding. The officer gave him a pass just for the wedding. The young man, he would have to, he said, young man, you have to be back by 7 p.m. Sunday. The young man said, you don't understand, sir, said the recruit. I'm a part of the wedding. He says, no, you don't understand. The officer shot back, you're in the Navy. So many times we use other excuses not to be in the army of God. Amen. But we're here. And I don't think Jesus ever took it lightly when he gave his blood to secure you, to bless you, to heal you, to help you. And this is a great month, November, to be thankful for the blessings of God in our life. Amen. Would you stand with me? When we choose Jesus... We not only join the church, we join the service, literally a spiritual military, if you would, which requires attention. It doesn't make me any, make me a commander. I know he's the commander in chief. I'm, I'm a soldier like you are. I'm figuring this thing out. You know, term used to, scripture used to term like backsliding, amen, to fall back, to go AWOL. I know a lot of people that have started serving God and went a little AWOL. But, you know, the, the blessing of Christ is He doesn't shoot us in the butt to get us back. Amen. He just brings you back into the house. Says, welcome back. Amen. Like the prodigal. He'll kill the fatted calf. Amen. Welcome you back as a father. And bless you and hug you and love you. Woo! Jesus. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. No, 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 no. You're so much better to us. I know when we get to heaven how we're going to realize what we could have done while we were here. You have given us a tremendous opportunity over the next few years to witness the grace of God. Father, I ask you to season my words. and not, not mean, Let me be too mean about all the stuff that's going on. I want to be a balanced man when it comes to all this. Yes, I'm frustrated. Yes, I see things that are not right. So did David. So did Abraham and Moses and Ruth. So did Paul. You saw it when you were here on earth. Help us to be kingdom-minded and press toward and press forward. Help us to be good soldiers. Amen. Everybody looking at me. Attention. I said attention. Sydney, I said attention. There you go. Amen. There's something about it. There's something about when I watch the military and I see their discipline and I think about the house of God. God, help us to be more attentive. Attention just means attentive. Attentive to the things around. You know, I can't pass a, a, a piece of paper on the ground without stopping and picking it up. Amen. I, I'm, if I, if I got to take your plate to the trash, I will. I'm not going to let you leave it on that table. I have attention for that. I have attention for the house. I appreciate those that mow this grass and look after this place. Hallelujah. Hey, soldier. You're in the military now. Amen. You're serving a commander-in-chief. Hallelujah. Well, I wonder what he wants me to do. You find out. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you what he wants you to do right now. He wants you to reach down and get a tithe and offer an envelope. He wants you to learn to be a giver of your time. 
Amen. Your treasure and your tithe. And this is what's important. So many people say, well, I gave my time. Okay, thank you for sitting here today. Uh, I, I, get, I get my treasure. I know there are times you served others. I appreciate that. We're all commanded to do that. We're all also commanded to give our tithe. My daughter came in and sat with me. She said, she said Pastor, it's funny. You know, Katie's my, my, she's my stepdaughter, but she looks at me as not only her dad, but as her pastor. She said, help me understand tithing. And I said, you know, Katie, I, not a problem. And I opened my Bible, and I began to share with her the principle of tithing from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And as I did, because she, she asked, should I tithe on business? Should I tithe from, and we walked through this thing. And I said, but you have to decide. But I can tell you this. Look at my life. Look where I was 35, 40 years ago. Making uh, $5 an hour working for RC Cola. And I tithe 50 cents off that 5 bucks an hour. Amen. Look at where I've been in life. And you say, well, Pastor, you just swallowed Yeah, I did. As a soldier, I swallowed it. And I said, God, if this is a way to blessing, I'm going to do it. Now, do I get frustrated when the wicked prosper, just like David? Absolutely. But I can promise you this. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. And you have no idea the economy that's fixing to take place over the next few years and where it's going. And if you're not a tither, if you're not a giver, if you don't understand that I'm going to let God take this 10% and bless my 90% and watch and see what he does. You've watched my life. You know what? I, I, I don't joke about this. You see how I live. My truck has almost uh, 90,000 miles on it. Amen. I just keep running, keep going. But 18 years ago, I had nothing. You know what I did? Went to church and I tithed. I didn't back off. And I've watched and see what God does. Amen. You're a faithful people. You're soldiers in the army of God. Well, listen, John, I know your kids are in the military now, so that sermon spoke to you today. Amen. So I can tell you this. You're all soldiers. You're all soldiers. Thank God for our vets. Amen. Give our vets one more hand before you sit down. <laughs> Reach and grab a tie that offer an envelope. If you're giving by phone, if you're watching online, you need to be a giver. Amen. So make sure you go to Holy Wild. Dot net. Be seated, if you would, just for a few minutes. I got an, an announcement, soldier. I remind you that you are in the kingdom. Be a follower, a fighter. Be familiar with your fellow soldiers. Connect with people in this life. Be faithful. Hallelujah. Normally, uh, over the last few years, we've done a, um, a hobo Saturday. Amen. But over the, let me just be honest with you. Uh, the last few years has been, it's been tough because it started out more as a fellowship, and now it's almost like we're pushing to make things happen changing things up this year yeah you say well, pastors up because of the pandemic uh maybe maybe not bottom line is we're still going to gather but i've talked with my pastor and some of you have still not met him we're going to have him in church here on tuesday and wednesday uh december 1st and 2nd and on that night we're going to eat here at this house after church we're going to have fellowship with the preacher. Amen? So you get to meet my pastor. So I'm going to have you bring your soups and your gumbos and your stuff on that Tuesday night. Now, Wednesday night, we're going to do it again out in, Cros in New Caney. We're going to do the same thing. You'll be invited to both places. They'll be invited to both places so we can fellowship. But I want to have a powerful Tuesday. So instead of doing the hobo, amen, we're going to do a, a Tuesday. And, we, and you can dress like in your overalls you want to. You do anyway. Amen, which is fine with us. Hallelujah. So uh, just want to remind you that if you've not met my pastor, you're in for it, man. And he is having the time. He is connected with some college students, and uh, he's reaching into a college. He's preaching into a college. I haven't heard him this excited in years. He, so that's why he won't be here that Sunday, because he's got these college students coming to church, and now they've just purchased a new building, building a new church. I'm so proud for my pastor because we understand each other. Last night, uh, I was watching uh, the football game. I'm back on the football game now, and watch this. They kicked over to Walter and in, 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 in that gal from California. Did y'all see that? Did y'all notice that? He interrupted my football game with his crowd of four cars honking at him. Okay, there were six. My bad. So I said, I can't, I can't, well, I got to watch the football game. So I'm hunting for the football game, Brian. I'm going. So I went to USA, and then my pastor texted me. Can't watch a football game. He's a Notre Dame fan. So I thought, technology is such a wonderful thing. I FaceTimed him. I said, Pastor, you see? And he didn't even know how to do it. I said, hit the camera in the top right corner. 
And finally he hit the camera. He said, hey, little buddy. I said, hey, Pastor Mike, watch this. And I turned my phone toward my TV, which I'd found the game. He went, hey, and he got all excited. I love a guy who gets excited about new technology. <laughs> Amen. So we watched it until it switched back so he could watch the game. Hallelujah. And again, I can't leave you Aggie fans out there. I'm glad y'all won. That's a blessing for you. Amen. You're, you're almost undefeated. Getting back to that, before David comes, let me mention this. We got new mugs in, and we got some, uh, got, I love these, uh, some new gators. They're bigger than the other ones, so they got more stretch to them. And you can get that back in the, the bookstore, and you can take that right there and send that out as a, as a Christmas gift, and you've blessed people. People write to office all the time, send us in mugs. Amen. Well, there it is. What a blessing. You can pick that up in the store. David, come on up. Hallelujah. Well, y'all feel good? Soldiers, you feel good? All right. November the 8th, the TLCC Ladies Retreat Registration sign-ups only available for one more week. Please sign up and register now at the registration table in the back of the church. See Lucinda or Cheryl for details. Is there anything else you guys need to say about that? She's back there waiting. If you have questions, she's there. They have a sheet and they have a sign-up. Ask her and she'll... That is the Google of the ladies' retreat right there. Now through November the 15th, Tate and Pantry Food Ministry, time to buy some groceries to help out with our food pantry. Uh, with goods for the Thanksgiving blessing, boxes, grab grocery lists, buy some groceries on the list, bring groceries to the church next Sunday. It's that easy. Food will be distributed on Sunday, November the 22nd for Thanksgiving. Thank you. Is, is that list back there? Okay. She's also going to be back there. For the food list. Uh, yeah, it's simple, guys. It's just You grab the list, you find out what's on the list, and if there's something on there that you can buy to help somebody have a better Thanksgiving, that's what we want. It's just a, an opportunity, again, to bless our house and to bless some of your family that maybe wouldn't come, that maybe doesn't have an opportunity to come, um, and let them know that we love them. And sometimes that's all it takes, and that'll bring them into the house. So we want to be able to bless people coming into Thanksgiving. November 11th, continue to pray for our country. Pray for our veterans. Veterans Day is on November 11th. December the 12th is going to be the Hobo Christmas. I think he was just saying that's going to be kind of changed up. We're going to do that December 1st and the 2nd, and that's going to be the first week, midweek. We're going to come together, fellowship, and then we're going to eat in the back. Anything else? Swap is today after service. Uh, see the riches. Um, if you guys want to get involved in that, I know they're fantastic people, fantastic food, and and Ken definitely agrees with that. Um, and it's really again everything we do in this church. The reason he called it Little Country Church is just he wanted to have that feel. He wanted to have the feel that the church would never get too big, that we couldn't still fellowship, that we couldn't still hang out, we couldn't still find out where somebody fits and fit. And that's what it's all about. And so, guys, yeah, we, we will be having prayer on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Um, come, if you guys have prayer requests of any sorts, drop it in the box, and they will be praying for that on uh, Tuesday. And also, uh, if, if you guys need anything, like, put it in the box. Let us know. That's how we, we go and dig in the box, find out when you want to be baptized, when you, when you got um, your dedications coming up. All that stuff goes in the box. And so as a church, this is your way of communicating with us uh, outside of Facebook or whatever. If you don't have that, um, just drop it in the box. Let us know. And then, uh, again, we have a website, brand new website. Uh, get a hold of us. Put something on there. Let us know if you need something. We, I know you think we can read your mind all the time. We can't. Please don't be offended with us when you don't tell us. But if you tell us, we will do our best to be able to fulfill the needs that you have. Amen. Lord, I thank you for the gift and the giver in the house. I pray that you would bless them, use them, overflow them, Lord. For your word says that you, we will be given to, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, Lord, 
More of us need some running over, so I just pray that you would open up the windows of heaven toward our lives in such a way that we would run over with the blessings that come from God. I thank you and I praise you. Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom.